I come to DC, and that shit was like the wild, wild west. Like, the locker room was nowhere near close. It was like a hierarchy in the locker room. The people that was getting money didn't really deal with the people that wasn't getting money. It was a split locker room. I'm like, in Denver, everybody, like everybody, you mm-hmm. know, hey, Greasy having a party, the entire team show up. Willie Middlebrooks having a party, the entire team show up. Rod Smith having a barbecue. Shannon, you know, everybody was together. Yeah. So when I get to D.C., it's like I'm walking in, like, I just joined big dog status, but I'm cool with I'm cool with all the mm-hmm. I'm cool with everybody. Yeah. You know? And you realize like everybody don't fuck with everybody. Like people see me and LeVar together and like, oh, they big time. They ain't they ain't messing with us. I'm like, what what y'all talking about? Oh no, nah, he getting so much money. I'm like, oh no, nah, that ain't me. I don't I don't know about him, but <clears throat> That's not me. I rock with everybody. Yeah. You know? So all of the people that wasn't eating, I think when you start to say, hey, dog, you know, whatever you need, come to the house and eat. And, you know, they like, you invite me to your house? Like, that don't never happen. You know, like, mm. I start bringing everybody together. Right. Um, and then I get Sean. You know, we get Sean. We draft Sean. Trade for Santana. Now I got my crew. Mm-hmm. Like, it. Two years, I got I got my dogs. I got Sean and I got Santana. It was up like it was it was so crazy to flip the locker room. Uh, then you had Chris Samuels. Like everybody began to blend. Um, so when you talk about leadership, I felt like my role was putting the team together because Chris Cooley was my partner. You okay, know? Yeah, Cooley. So I got the white Cooley boys hanging with the black boys. Yeah, Chris Cooley at my pool party. You know, the lineman at my pool party. What is this white boy doing? Yeah, shit, that's my homeboy. You know, so to be able to put everybody together and, and get them involved where we were we were moving around, you could see the closeness of that team 05 to 07. You know, once Sean, once, once Sean uh, situation happened, it changed because Coach Gibbs left we got we got the wrong voice in and that separated that team. Like that set the organization. <clears throat> I never I never cried over a stranger before. Bro, I hadn't cried I cried over Sean like I knew him personally, boy. Bro, I hadn't cried um I I hadn't I couldn't remember, you know, one of my biggest fears was losing my grandmother and I lost my grandmother before I lost Sean. I lost my grandmother uh, in 07 as, as well and then my best friend mom we lost in 06 in November 06 so I had I had a lot of death in a year you know um, I had a lot of death in a year and I guess Sean just brought it all out you know that was like the first time I cried they was asking me to deliver the speech like I was in Miami you know, we got on the plane. We went to Miami to be around the family, to be around Sean. I was in Miami when the news broke. We go. So when we came back, it was like they wanted me to talk about Sean. And I'm sitting in front of a room, 7,500 people, men, boo-hoo crying. Like, you know, so I, I, I think that moment changed so much. If you look at how that team played, we probably should have won the Super Bowl that year because that's how tight our team was. We went up to Seattle and lost, you know. Carlos up, dropped that damn pick. Carlos Rogers dropped the pick. Um, then we get, we get the uh, onside kick and throw the ball three straight times. We're on the 40-yard line. We run the ball, get a field goal. We throw three straight incompletions. We had numerous – I, I mean, we had numerous opportunities to put that game away, and we didn't. And we had already beat, I think that was the year, we had already beat Chicago. We had beat Chicago and Pittsburgh yep. that year. So <clears throat> it was just one of those, um, if we would have beat Seattle, I think we win the Super Bowl. But if we had Sean, it ain't no doubt about it. Well, the team had came together so much Around for Sean yeah. that everybody was channeling 
their son Taylor's spirit. Mm -hmm. So it was people that elevated their game and was playing. Reed Dowdy's Reed, Reed no Sean Taylor. Man, but he, <laughs> elevated, he elevated his game. Mm -hmm. He got that. He got the max. All of a sudden, you got the max out of every player on the field. Yeah, you know, um, and and that. I mean, I think we had a chance, and then Coach Gibbs just couldn't deal with it, walk mm -hmm. away. Um, Greg Williams probably should have got the. When you say Coach job. Gibbs couldn't deal with it, what do you mean? Was it? Was I mean, it just health. Just health. Okay. Uh, a, a lot. Sean passing. It was so just a lot did, on him. Sean, Sean impacted him. Oh yeah. 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 Of course, Coach Gibbs is a, a spiritual man and uh, a great man, great leader. But you know, just the health. 